Well, th th thank you very much. I was encouraged to write this book uh, by Keith Wallace, co-author with Enoch Powell uh, of his book on the House of, uh, Enoch Powell's book on the House of Lords in the Middle Ages. Keith was a Europeanized American, an authority on 15th century baronies who inherited a large fortune in American soap powder. <coughs> since, uh, <laughs> since before the Norman Conquest, my own family has had ample experience of different kinds of peerage, uh, of Saxon earldom, which was too early to be hereditary, uh, barony by tenure, baronies of this kind um, have become extinct, barony by writ of summons to attend Parliament in the 13th century, Baronies of this kind have become an unusual survival. Uh, in, in the 17th century, an Irish Viscountcy to celebrate our descent from Charlemagne, and then my own barony, the first Lord Sudley's barony of Queen Victoria's coronation, created according to the current mode by letters patent. And there are two reasons for the creation of this barony of Sudley. Uh, the first Lord uh, was awarded the barony, first of all for merit, he was chairman of the Commission for the Rebuilding of the Houses of Parliament, which selected the present design. The second reason it was his, that his support was badly needed in the House of Lords for Melbourne's weak Whig administration. And Sudley owed his appointment of chairman of the Commission for the Rebuilding of the Houses of Parliament because of his personal design of our old, home, old family home of Toddington in Gloucestershire, which is very similar to the Houses of Parliament, really the forerunner of the Houses of Parliament, being the same blend of perpendicular Gothic and picturesque styles. And Sudi used the sculpture at Toddington to make his own private statement about politics, how he had disgraced himself as a dirty Whig and wished to atone for this by telling everybody that au fond, he was really a romantic, uh, 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 a romantic young Englander or high Tory. There can be no other explanation for the string course around the main block of his beloved Toddington, showing the heads of the kings of England from, from William the Conqueror to Henry VIII. Well, too much of our history has been written by Whigs, absorbed by the increasing ascendancy of the House of Commons, and through being, like the first Lord Sudha High Tory, I felt best qualified to write this history of the old House of Lords, which is an important institution in its own right, has been overlooked by the Whigs. And I hope historians who may follow will be assisted by the History of Parliament Trust, which has already covered the House of Commons and now has good plans to provide biographies of many more members of the House of Lords, reaching back to the Middle Ages, when, after all, the House of Lords was the stronger element in the Constitution. In the 13th century, when the House of Commons started, MPs were tax collectors only. It was not until the 15th century, they, be, that they became our legislators as well, and it's only since the Reform Bill of 1832, and on the advice of the Duke of Wellington, <laughs> that um, the uh, um, House of Lords ceased to be uh, a um, coordinate legislative power and became instead um, a revising chamber, nevertheless retaining a strong influence. Um, I um, conclude. Um, with um, to say to this book by explaining what, what was wrong with the Cranbourne deal of 1999 to spare temporarily 92 only of the hereditaries. When in 2004 Blair sought to evict the remaining 92 hereditaries, leadership of the Conservative opposition in the House of Lords was at last properly organised and Strathclyde, the leader of the opposition, was able to tell Blair that unless he could come up with a sensible plan of who was to replace the hereditaries, the remaining 92 hereditaries, then uh, the uh, 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 Strathclyde would arrange that the House of Lords should hold up all his more important legislation. Under the exercise of that threat, Blair's, Blair backed off. The same thing did not happen in 1999, owing to the intervention of the Cranbourne deal, which, it must be said, never came from Cranbourne. It was Blair's initiative as a ploy to split opposition to the eviction of most of the hereditaries. And it was a ploy which I'm afraid Cranbourne, now Marcus of Salisbury, fell for. Since then, there has been a total lack of consensus as to who's to replace the hereditaries. Ever too jealous of his own authority, the House of, House of Commons would never wear an elected House of Lords in competition with itself. Their common sense and history therefore provide the only answers to the future, which is to restore the hereditaries. Thank you. Thank you.